Hi guys, so it has been a hot minute since I filmed and I felt like a good way to kind of ease back into some filming and to kind of give you guys some updates would be to do kind of a chatty get ready with me style video so I can play with a whole bunch of new makeup that's in front of me. Some of this is first impressions, some of this is stuff that I've used before, but I thought this style of video would be a good way for me to kind of catch up with you guys, kind of let you know what's been going on. I know I haven't posted probably for about a month and a half and I kind of want to update you guys on what's been going on and then also um, kind of my plans going forward to kind of get back into a filming habit and and kind of talk to you guys about what my plans are for the channel. So I think I'm just gonna kind of put makeup on, talk to you about what I'm putting on my face, but then also try and give you some updates on just life in general. So if you guys are really only here for makeup reviews, I totally understand this might not be that interesting for you, but I did feel like I needed to kind of come on here and talk to you guys a little bit before just like slamming out new content and not addressing the fact that I hadn't put anything out for a while. So all that to say, I'm going to I think I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I always feel like you can see better when the camera's a little more zoomed in for makeup application and we'll get into it. So I think the easiest way for me to go about this is to kind of show you a couple products I'm gonna put on my face, kind of group together, and then just apply them to my face so that I can then talk to you guys about other stuff. So primer and foundation. The primer I wanna use is from Catrice. It's their new Prime and Fine Fresh It Up moisturizing with bamboo water so that's their aquafresh hydro primer i have not used this one yet but it sounds like a primer i would really enjoy this time of the year and then there's a new brand at ulta called smith and colt i saw it pop up on their website and i went into my ulta to pick up a couple things maybe about a week ago and i was actually shocked to find a whole display of smith and colt had gone into the store so i was looking around at their products it's definitely in the luxury end of things. I picked up the foundation. It's $42, so it's a little on the high end, but it's their Veiled Threat Weightless Micro Blurring Foundation. Here is what the box looks like. And it comes with 1.11 fluid ounces, so a little more than a standard ounce. The bottle is like this really pretty glass bottle and it's got a pump at the top here. But what intrigued me was, and I'm just gonna read this off the website, it says it is a weightless micro blurring foundation to soften skin with an illuminating finish. Mousse to cream formula uses aloe vera gel and chlorophyll to instantly calm and brighten. And then it just explains how to put it on. So I thought those were some interesting claims. I don't know, it intrigued me and I liked the consistency of it when I was in the store. I did pick up the shade 120 Cool. It is the third shade. So there are two lighter shades that are neutral, but they looked a little more yellowy and a little lighter, honestly, than I needed. It has a fairly good shade range, I think. Let me count these up. So it has 38 different shades from what I can see online. So it seems to have a nice mix of different undertones and light to dark. It seems like it's got good representation in dark shades. So they have the entire shade range at my Ulta. And you know, one thing that I did notice, and this is a bit of a tangent, but this whole video is probably going to be a bit of a tangent, um, is they actually had the foundations dark to light. So typically, and I don't think I'd even realized this before, um, when I look at most foundation displays, the top rows are always the lighter shades, and then you kind of have to kneel down to see the darker shades. It's typically how it works, unless they have a lot of room to go left to right. And so this had about four rows of, I think, shades, if I'm thinking about it. And they had all the dark shades at the top with all of the imagery for the brand. So it was like the top shelf had all the stuff about the foundation and all the imagery and the models. And it was all the dark shades right at the top with some beautiful models on there. And then it kind of went dark to light. And I don't know, like... It just hit me because I don't think I've ever seen a brand choose to display their products that way. And and now that I think about it, I'm like, why don't brands do that? Like, I don't know, it just, it's a very silly thing and it may mean nothing to no one, but for some reason it just gave me a really happy feeling about this brand when I saw that they were prioritizing those darker shades to be like the front and center thing of their display. I know very little about this brand other than they are cruelty-free. This product is um, both cruelty-free, gluten-free, and vegan, formulated without parabens, phthalates, or synthetic fragrance. So I liked what it stood for. I liked the fact that it said it was illuminating. That's kind of my favorite kind of foundation. And then this whole mousse de cream with aloe vera gel and chlorophyll, I don't know, it intrigued me. So we'll get all that on my face and then I'll pause and I'll kind of talk to you about the next round of products. Okay, so on to kind of the purpose of the video, which is to kind of just give you guys some life updates and kind of talk to you about what's been going on. Um, I 
have every intention of keeping my channel going with two to three videos a week and it just for a number of reasons hasn't happened here at the beginning of the year and I kind of want to talk to you guys about what's been going on and then also um, kind of my plans going forward over the next couple of weeks and probably into spring a little bit. Um, side note, this feels really, really good and really cooling. It's very thin. Hmm. Really like this. That feels fantastic on my skin right now. So if I'm going to just boil it all down super fast, um, the beginning of the year has just been, it's been a lot. Um, it's been a lot more than I anticipated. It's a lot more than I expected. And for me, um, the filming and the editing process has just, it was one thing that had just kind of pushed me over the edge of being just way too much. And some of the things for the beginning of the new year have been really positive and awesome. And I want to talk to you guys and share those things with you guys. But then also, there's just been a lot of um, stressors and some tough things going on that um, I also feel like have contributed to just me being out of energy. And I had a very wise boss once tell me that you have to schedule both your time and your energy. And you can't just look at your calendar and say, yeah, I can fit these 42 things in my day if I schedule myself completely full from start to finish. Because at the end of the day, you might have time for all of those things, but you might not have the energy for all of them. And I get that sometimes you've got to just push through and you've got to just dive into it regardless of whether or not your energy is at top levels. But it's something that stuck with me over the years because I also feel like scheduling your time and your energy is a good idea. Hmm. Hopefully that, that looks a little blight now that I see this. E. That looks pretty fair. Well, we'll see if this oxidizes at all because right now that is way too freaking light for me. All right, well, please dry darker because otherwise I'm going to look slightly ghosty and I'm going to have to put a bunch of bronzer on. So let's start off with the positive things. So the beginning of the year, um, I think I had shared in a video or maybe it was a different post. My sister had a my niece, which is super exciting. She said, came into the world super healthy. It was a, you know, normal delivery in terms of like there didn't need there were any major complications to the pregnancy. Um, my sister lives in Chicago with her husband, and um, so when I got the word that everything was going down, I drove out there. I'm in um, Columbus, Ohio, so I have about a five and a half hour drive, maybe six, depending on traffic, drive out to them. So it's not unmanageable. So I drove out there to be there um, for the pregnancy and the delivery. And then I also went back out there for a week. I had kind of told my sister, my mom went out and stayed with her for a while right after. And she'd stayed with her for several weeks to just kind of help out and, you know, Having a new baby, this is her first, it's a lot, right? It's a lot of um, adjustment, lack of sleep, and help is definitely invaluable. And so my mom came out and stayed with them for probably hmm, a couple of weeks. And I told my sister, like, let me know when you need me. If you need me, I'm there for you. I will be there to help you. And so when I got the call um, a few weeks ago that she needed my help, I dropped everything and just went right out to her and stayed with her for a little over a week just to kind of, like I said, help out, help her adjust, help her um, get as much sleep as she can, do the cleaning, do the cooking, run the errands, do whatever she needed me to do. So that is awesome, but it also means that I've been, there have been two, almost three weeks of me um, being gone. Um, and maybe a little bit unexpectedly. So I'd obviously when I'm gone, I can't be filming or anything like that. So that's definitely been an impact in terms of just unexpected, unplanned for time that has definitely uh, made just keeping up with my channel a little more difficult. All right, so I'm looking a little ghostly. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the back of my arm and swatch it and see if this dries down darker on my wrist. So I always like to do like a, a wrist swatch and then come back with some fresh foundation after that dries just to see um, really side by side how these darken. But right now I'm feeling a little ghostly and a little pale. So 
But to pause here, I would say this is not the most illuminating foundation I have ever used. In fact, I would say it's more natural finish. It's not super mattifying, but it's also not glowy at all. It's really kind of in the middle. It's very smoothing looking. It's not clinging to dry patches or settling into any lines on my forehead or weirdness around my nose. It's giving me medium coverage, which is I am fine with. I'm okay with some of my sunspots and things coming through. I'd rather have a medium coverage all over my face and then spot correct. That's kind of my preference. I also don't know as if I would have to powder this one. It seems to be almost be setting on its own, which could be nice, but I had a powder I wanted to play with. I am just gonna spot conceal with this Revlon Photo Ready stick. I'm gonna try out a CoverGirl version of this. This has been my favorite one for just spot correcting acne. I'm gonna go ahead and prime my eyes with my Urban Decay Primer Potion. I don't have a new one. And then I am gonna go ahead and do my concealer. And this is my Milani Conceal and Perfect. I have the lightest shade, pure ivory. A feeling because this foundation is so light, this is gonna look really dark next to it. We'll see how that goes. I've been really excited to try that one, if not yet. And then to set my under eyes, I'm gonna use this new Physician's Formula. This is their Mineral Loose Powder. It actually has some SPF in it, but it has a talc-free formula. It also doesn't contain any cornstarch, which is often the thing that gets substituted in for talc, um, which is also, I find even more drying than talc. So I was excited to see a talc-free loose powder from Physician's Formula. I will say, um, I have not used this yet. I've just played around with the packaging a little bit and I don't understand it. It's got this really dense puff thing at the top. I don't know, when I tried this puff thing just messing around before I took my makeup off one night, I haven't really worn it, worn it. Um, what I was noticing was that the stamp um, that comes through in here is what goes on your face. It doesn't blend very well. I, I don't know, I don't like the purpose of this, but there's a cap here that I'm just gonna knock some into. Oh, and you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and give you my brow products too so I can just keep talking for a while. Um, I'm gonna try two Wet n Wild brow products. So this is their new micro brow pencil. I have the shade, I don't know, it doesn't say on the packaging what this is, but it's like a little Anastasia um, brow whiz kind of thing. And then I also got their pomade. This is the shade medium brown. Maybe that's medium brown as well. And it kind of is mimicking the packaging we saw from Benefit maybe a couple years ago where it has the brush in the cap and then you unscrew this and the little pomades down below. So we're gonna actually try both of those products today. All right, so that's the next kind of round of products. Um, so sister pregnancy, awesomeness aside, my niece is adorable. I will ask my sister if she's okay with me putting a few pictures of her in this video. I always like to just be cognizant of putting stuff out online because not every parent wants tons and tons of baby photos of their kids out in the public eye from the minute they're born. So then the other thing that's been going on is been um, a new business that we're starting up. So um, I work for my dad's business. Um, my dad is a PhD uh, nutritionist. So he has his doctorate in nutrition. He's board certified for both animals and for humans, which is interesting. You don't typically go and get both of those uh, degrees, but he did that. And But his career has been primarily focused on pet nutrition. So um, mostly dogs and cats, but he has done um, foods and treats and diets for, gosh, everything from zoo animals to um, small pocket pets to birds, etc. Um, he really does understand nutrition for pretty much animals in general, which has been pretty cool my whole life, especially now as an adult. Having pets, like my dad has been this awesome resource as far as anything I needed to know about pet nutrition or what to feed my dogs or cats or whatever. So um, I work for my dad's company. I left retail. I worked for a the home office for DSW Shoes for um, 11 years. And I did sort of a communications role. And then I also ended up um, running store operations for them towards the end of my career there. So I have a real passion for communications. It's always been one of my favorite things. And one of the things I realized after joining my dad's company about six years ago is that 
there's not really a great place for pet parents to go to get really good nutrition information online. There's good medical type sites from, from veterinarians, so like um, PetMD and others that are focused on more like health things. There's some good ones for behavior, so if you want to train your dog for something, there's some really great reputable sites out there for that. But what's out there for pet nutrition is kind of shady, if I'm being totally honest. Um, some of the top sites, as I did some research, um, I started to realize were run by people who have zero understanding of pet nutrition. One of them is run by a dentist, and he's probably the top Google hit. And so it blows my mind that he's getting like millions and millions and millions of views and hits on his website. And he's a dentist and doesn't know really anything about pet nutrition. There's another lady who's writing a whole bunch of articles about what to feed your dog's food and her background is in automotive insurance. And so it's just like, I've been like, where in the heck do pet parents go to get this information from somebody who actually knows what the heck they're talking about? And it started to become a real um, concern of mine because I felt like People were getting some really bad information about their pets, and I don't know about you guys, but I am I love my pets. I would do absolutely anything for them, and I can't imagine somebody else feeling the same way I do and getting advice from somebody who they think knows what they're talking about, and it turns out they are an auto insurance adjuster, and they've just decided to do this on the side, and they haven't been super transparent about the fact that they don't know what the heck they're talking about, or everything that they've learned is just from reading other people online who don't really know what they're talking about. So. I don't know, it's really interesting. And then the other thing that I learned, and I'm tangenting a little bit on here, but um, is, you know, a lot of people will go to their vet to get nutritional information. Well, your vet gets one class in college for pet nutrition, one. Now, in your vet's defense, that's one more class than a human medical doctor gets. Your medical doctor, your GP gets zero nutrition classes in his medical degree, uh, which is mind boggling to me considering how much we know what we eat and uh, impacts our overall health. But regardless, that is the state of, state of things. And so what I realized was that there was a real need for um, a good reputable place for people to go for pet nutrition information on what to feed their pet and what do these ingredients do and mean and what are things to avoid and what are things that are myths, right? So what are things that marketing teams who have no nutritional background have made up and pushed out to the public and because you know it sounds good on paper people have believed it but it's not actually true there's there's stuff like that out there right and so um i feel like my family and my friends honestly because they know what i do have this benefit of being able to talk to dr callings anytime they want to about their pets and believe me, I deal with so many texts and phone calls and messages from people all the time wanting advice about their pets. And I have a conversation with my dad and we give them some advice back. For a while now, I've had this idea of we need to leverage that. I want to get what's in his brain out into the world in a way that can really help a lot more people. And so we've had a lot of internal discussions about how do we do that? How do we pay for that? Because it's a lot of time and energy. Um, it would be time and energy away from our normal business, which our normal business in a quick summary is we help startups. So people who have made this really great biscuit in their kitchen, for example, and they want to scale up and they want to start selling them in your local pet stores, but they don't have any idea how to do that. And they want to make sure it's safe and nutritious or same thing with foods, etc. We help a lot of startups um, with pet nutrition and making sure that they are meeting the legal requirements and that they are above board and it's healthy and nutritious, etc. So we help a lot of different companies kind of build products. And so Part of that includes the nutrition and the formulation and all the things that are in my dad's head and part of it involves the marketing and the communication and the stuff that I'm super passionate about. So that's what our base business is. So whereas we want to do this sort of communication thing, nutrition outreach, um, we are a very small business. There's only four of us in the business. And so we aren't really, we don't have a lot of depth. We don't have a lot of free time. We're pretty busy as it is all of the time. And um, so we, we knew we wanted to do this, um, 
but we had to find a way to actually have it make us some money as well. And so, you know, the great thing about me having done this YouTube channel is that I now have some experience and now I understand a little bit more about um, how AdSense works and how ads on blogs work and how, you know, click through marketing works and referral links and, and so on and so forth. Like I understand how you monetize information out on the internet in a way that I don't really think I spent a lot of time learning when I was at DSW. So anyway, all that to say, we decided to go forward and do this. And um, so we have a, we did a lot of brainstorming on what we wanted to uh, do and what we wanted the name of the site to be and how we wanted to do it that was fun. Um, because nutrition is super interesting to me, but it also is highly scientific. So we had to, we wanted to find a way to make it fun and interesting. And so ultimately we talked about it a lot and, um, we've decided to kind of leverage the pets in our life because they get the benefit of having my dad in their life to make them super healthy and happy and live what great lives. And so we've decided that the, a fun way to make the content we want to build enjoyable and super fun and super approachable is to leverage the pets that are in our lives now to kind of be that voice and to be that um, kind of uh, narrator for the things we want to do, etc. So my dog's name is Satchmo. We call him Mo for short. And he has a, um, a very quizzical mind, we have decided. And we have, my husband and I laugh and have laughed since we've had him. He's six now. That... Um, Mo knows lots of things and we always look at Mo and he always has these very deep thoughts that seem to be running through his head as we look at him. So, you know, we frequently laugh that we um, put words in our dog's mouths and we make up conversations or things that they're thinking and we do this all the time just naturally in our house. I think if you are not an animal person, you would come into our house and think we had lost our ever-loving minds. But regardless, we haven't. So we have decided that the website and kind of the whole platform that we want to build out on YouTube, honestly, and out on website and social media is going to be uh, Mo Knows. Because Mo Knows lots of things and Mo Knows Nutrition. Because Mo has the advantage of having pet parents and grandparents in his life that can help him learn about what's best for him. So we've got a whole plan in place that we spent some time building, um, did a full um, five-year P&L to kind of figure out how much money we were going to need to set aside from our base business to make this work. I mean, we are the quintessential small business. We figured all that out. We went and got Mono's trademarked. We got uh, social media locked up. Um, we have not posted anything out there yet. But we have um, at the real Mo knows locked up on pretty much every major social media platform out there, um, and then Mo knows.org is our site. And we're, so I've been working to build the website, working to build a social media strategy, figure out the content we need to do. We want to do real pet food reviews that are different and far better than anything you could get out there today. Um, and we have a whole plan for how we want to review pet foods. We know we will not need to write nutrition articles, but we also know that we don't want everything to just be text-based. We want to do a whole bunch of videos with our dogs and, and teach things and share things in a very fun, natural way, as opposed to, I'm teaching science. So anyway, all that to say, it's a lot of work on top of my day job. Um, and I'm a little... Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by the amount of work that it's taking because we're doing all this internally to get everything set up and all the thoughts and conversations and just detail that it's taking to get a website up and running, to get videos planned, to get content written, to do just do, to do all the things. So I'm all over the place and I may end up editing out some of this. So if my uh, face looks slightly different, it's probably because I've edited out some of my rambling here. All that to say, it's been a lot of work to get this going on top of my day job. And I have just felt like I've been working, I don't know, 80, 70, 80 hour weeks on things. And 
um, I still feel behind and not kind of where I want to be with the website and with some of the content and uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, but then I've also had this really unique opportunity to go and speak at a couple of major conferences about what we're trying to do. Um, I wasn't sure how the industry was going to respond, honestly, to what we're doing. We're not part of a pet brand, but we're not, uh, we're definitely no these people in this industry, my dad's been in the industry for years and years and years. He had his company for the last 15, but prior to that, um, he had worked for some major pet brands. And um, actually, here's a little fun fact. He worked um, at Hill Science Diet and was actually um, the lead scientist that figured out a lot of the prescription diets. So actually figured out how to turn off kidney disease, how to stop a urinary tract disease in a cat through just what they're eating. And so he was kind of the one who developed those products and did all the, you know, the studies with veterinarians to kind of prove that there are foods and different ways of feeding animals that can actually stop um, illnesses in an animal. So he's got a lot of experience. I laugh that my dad is secretly like the godfather of pet nutrition, <laughs> but he, he loves that comment. All right, quick pause here. Um, brows, I'm okay with. This felt very, very waxy. So I don't know as if I love how waxy this felt, although I do feel like even without brow setting gel, like my brows are going to set in place right now. Um, this seemed good. The color seems good. Maybe it's a little warmer than I like, but I think it worked. Um, so I'll keep playing around with these. Um, the concealer, it definitely has settled into some lines. I don't look super dry underneath my eyes, but it's definitely settled. So I, I feel like I'm gonna have to play around with that concealer, maybe try my powders that I know I like underneath my eyes and then kind of figure out maybe this just isn't a great combo or maybe I didn't blend it out well because I wasn't paying attention. So I don't feel like my under eyes look super dry. I just feel like there's been some settling into some fine lines and some creases there. I don't know how much you guys are gonna be able to see. So. We'll keep playing around with that. For my eyes, I wanna play around with this. This is the Sugar Rush palette from Flower Beauty. It's a really pretty color scheme in here, lots of pinks and purples, and I thought it just looked really pretty. And in particular, this uh, sort of silvery shade here, it looks like it's got sort of a, like a trichrome shift to it with greens and purples and blues and silvers. I don't know, it just looks really, really pretty. So I wanna do a look with that. I have no idea what I'm going to do. And then I do want to try a new mascara. I've got the Wet n Wild Mega Volume, so it's a little pink one. If this doesn't work, I have a standby for the Milani Most Wanted Lashes, which I did use one other time at this point, and I did like it. So if this is a total bomb, I'm probably going to layer this over the top of it. All right, so what was I talking about? Ah, yes, industry. So what's been interesting to me is that we've started to share with people in the industry that, hey, guys, we intend to do this. We are going to go out and we're going to talk nutrition. We're not going to talk marketing. We're not going to say one nutritional principle over another. We're going to talk about why you might feed your dog one particular way versus another. Um, we're going to be upfront about the sciences. We're going to also be upfront about when science hasn't given us an answer yet in terms of is something good or bad, and then talk about, you know, what does that mean? We're also going to review foods. So we, anyway, we've gone out and we've started to tell people that we know that, hey, we want, we're going to do this um, because we don't want, we don't want to catch anybody off guard, but we also, and we wanted to be transparent with the industry about what our plans were. I think I'm going to go in with this pinky shade first to start. So anyway, what I've been surprised about has been how interested the industry actually is with what we are doing. Um, I think they realize that because they are brands, because they are trying to sell something, because they are have their own principles in terms of how they've built their products, um, they're no longer neutral sources, right? They're, they're trying to sell something. They're trying to influence you to buy XYZ dog food or XYZ supplement or dog treat, etc. And so whereas it might be a great food, but them going out and trying to be an independent source for consumers or review foods or give nutritional information, um, it's met with some skepticism. And I would say healthy skepticism because um, it's not to say that if a brand tells me XYZ thing is, is true that I don't believe them, but I also recognize that they are trying to influence me to purchase something. Um, and so they, not to say they're all, brands are always lying every time they say anything, but 
I want to validate it, right? I would like an independent person or somebody who's tried it to before I make a decision on something, right? It's just like that in the makeup world. You know, someone can say this is the world's best foundation works for all skin types. Is it though? And does it all? Like, let's let's watch some reviews of it on YouTube, right? So same thing holds for pet products. What's interesting to me though is these brands have recognized that they are in a position where they can't really communicate well and they've got um, people like the dentist or the insurance adjuster who are writing articles with no information and sometimes they're right and oftentimes they're wrong and as a result consumers get very confused and so the industry and the people we talked to have actually been pretty excited about what we want to do we've been very upfront like listen we're not going to write reviews for you on behalf of you we're not doing sponsored posts like we're going to be completely autonomous in this respect um so don't expect that you're going to be able to like influence us to say something um and they've largely been completely okay with that um and what surprised me is they've actually been interested in kind of helping us get the word out even inside the industry about what we're doing and i was actually invited to speak at a couple of major conferences throughout the month of january about what our plans are and what we intend to do and how we intend to do it and just kind of give an update and i've been given so i've Part of what has taken time unexpectedly is planning, you know, these hour long presentations to a couple hundred people about what we're working on and traveling there and then giving the talk and answering questions afterwards and doing the follow up and so on and so forth. And so um, it's been fun. I actually enjoy giving talks. I enjoy that process, but I also don't just like slamming a couple of bullet points on a slide and calling it a day. I really like to be thoughtful and use storytelling and videos and pictures and beautiful slides to t do these talks. And so that takes a lot of time. So I'm planning all these talks, I'm building the web, planning all these talks, I'm traveling to these conferences and giving these sort of talks and presentations out there. I'm building the websites, I'm doing all the stuff behind the scenes and it's largely what I've been working on. Um, on top of my day job, on top of everything else, and then, you know, going and helping my sister and spending the time out there with her that she needs and, you know, trying to keep up with things out there. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm out there for her. So, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not definitely not as productive as I need to be. So that's all the positive things that have been like, you know, taking up a ton of time and energy and have just really ramped up to a point that I'm like, ah, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then there's also been some kind of crap things, to be totally honest. So, I mean, an easy to point to thing is I got sick for almost a week and that put me massively behind. I hate getting sick anyway, but it put me massively behind for all things, what, all things in general, my job, um, just my personal life, etc. Let me zoom you in even more so you can see how pretty this is. Um, yeah, so that just puts me even further behind, like I was saying. Um, but beyond that, um, if I'm being totally, totally honest, I do not do well. The beginning parts of the year, it's just mentally, I have to really watch myself. I don't think um, I struggle with depression on a daily day basis, um, but for some reason, the first several months of the year are always really tough on me mentally. Um, I do feel down and I do think part of it is um, the weather. I live in the middle of Ohio and we compete with Seattle for the most rainy, cloudy days in the country. And frequently we beat Seattle, which is uh, not something that I particularly love about my state. So what tends to happen is for some reason in the winter time, this cloud of doom, as I like to call it, kind of settles into the center of uh, Ohio and it's cloudy for days if, and days and weeks and weeks and you just don't see the sun and it's funny I remember realizing somewhere in my late 20s when I was obviously I've lived here for a while now and um, I realized that the sun had come out and I felt like it was in such a better mood and I was like why am I in such a good mood and then I realized it was literally just the sun like the sun made me feel so much more happy and just well balanced for the day so listen I now am hopefully intelligent enough to recognize that um, the beginning of the year is tough 
and I just have to be aware of that and do the things that I can do and put in the sunlight bulbs and take my vitamin D and when the sun is out make sure I'm out in it as much as possible because like in general it just kind of sucks but even with all that I will admit my energy level and my just sort of how I'm feeling about everything I, I, I'm down, I'm not gonna lie. Like at the beginning part of the year, I'm, I'm typically down and I fight through it and I know it's coming um, every single year. But then with all of this stress, even though it's positive stress and things I'm excited about with all of that stress, it's just been a lot. And I gotta be honest, by the end of the day, I'm typically, I'm just wiped. Like I get done with work, I finish dinner and I'm done and I'm just, I'm exhausted. So what's and what ends up happening is um, the end of the day, I'm reading a book and I'm going to bed early and I'm, I'm not editing the way that I typically do. So, you know, my schedule um, doesn't allow me to really film during the day. And because I travel a decent amount for my job, I really need to do most of my filming on the weekend. So typically what I do is film two to three videos every weekend, usually on a Saturday. And that is my content for the following week. And then I will maybe do a little bit of editing on Sunday or more than likely I will film like close up product shots, which takes some time or swatches. Um, I will do that on Sunday maybe do a little bit of editing but for the most part what happens is I have all of this footage that needs to be edited and I work my normal job I get done with dinner and usually somewhere around I don't know eight o'clock seven thirty eight o'clock I go upstairs to edit and I edit till probably 11 11 30 sometimes midnight depending on how long it takes me to edit um, and upload and then I get up in the morning and rinse and repeat and do my day job and do this. So like I say this not to be super complainy, but you know, this is not my day job. My day job is a full day job. And sometimes it's day job plus, especially right now as we're trying to get all of this done and ready. So I'm doing this stuff in the evenings. And what I've just found is that with my longer work hours and with the stressors, I'm just, I haven't had the energy. I've just been feeling, Every time I think about going up and editing, I've just been really bleh. And every time I sit down to film, I just feel like I'm half-assing it and it's not good content and, uh, and or I just, I stop partly through because I just, I'm not feeling it. And part of that, like I said, is just being tired and exhausted. And part of it is feeling kind of slightly down at the beginning of the year. Um, but there's, there's another factor, and this is the one where I'm, I'm gonna kinda stutter and stop a little bit because I'm not comfortable sharing this sort of negative thing in my life because it involves a lot of other people in my life, and I don't like sharing that kind of stuff. Um, if it's just me, like me, battling, feeling down at the beginning of the year, I think in large part compliments of just my cloudy environment, um, I will totally feel comfortable talking, but when it involves other people, I don't really like oversharing. Hopefully that makes sense. There's just been some stuff going on in my personal life involving people I really care about who, and it's just gotten really, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just been really dramatic and really exhausting. And a lot of people are dealing with a lot of hurt and it's definitely pulled me into the whole scenario. Um, and it's been honestly, completely mentally, and then ultimately physically exhausting. Um, it started, this issue started coming to light at the end of last year and it just ramped up in January and February and I feel like every day it's just been more and more and more. And I don't know when it's gonna stop, if I'm being totally honest, um, or if it's ever going to, or if this is just the new norm and, and as it relates to the situation. And I apologize, I'm being very cryptic. I just, like I said, I don't feel comfortable breaking confidences or talking about any of this. Ross and I are fine, our marriage is lovely, our animals are fine, everything involving my my physical house and you know my relationships is, we're fine. Everything is great, this has nothing to do with that. So. I did want to just clarify that, but 
Um, it's definitely been a little exhausting and I think it's just felt like a whole lot of stuff all at once. All this positive stuff, all this negative stuff, and it's just been... I got to a point where I was, I've was i just felt for weeks now, and heck, I would even go so far as to saying the last month, the last four weeks for sure, as this everything is just kind of built and built and built, I've just felt totally unequipped to handle it. Um, and I am actually in the process of interviewing some counselors for not only just my mental health, I always think it's a good idea to, when things are just feeling when you're just feeling a little overwhelmed in general to have a mental health check-in um, and have somebody to talk to. So I am looking for someone because I think I need some advice on how to handle the ongoing issue that shall not be named in my life. Um, I need some advice on how best to handle the situation and advise people and just deal with it myself. So I am looking for someone because I think it's definitely gotten to the point where I need that. Um, but I don't have someone, I haven't ha had a, uh, like a therapist or a counselor that I've gone to, uh, here that I can just call on and just use. I'm trying to do the things to get me to a healthier point and be able to handle some of this stuff. And I'm trying to organize my life as best I can to try and get done all the things when it just feels like there are not enough hours in the day and I am starting to slip and fail at things but you know honestly uh, this is why I kind of had to step back from filming and putting out content because you know I was trying to do three videos a week and um that is probably so for three videos I usually film probably about an hour an hour and a half worth of content for all three of them so that will to film three videos for the week that takes up a good chunk of my Saturday and then, you know, for every one of those videos, it has at least probably two to three hours of editing and upload. So at this point, for every video I put out, I'm putting in about four to five hours of time. So that's 12 to 15 hours a week. And I, I say that once again, not to be all like whiny or complainy or anything like that. Because, you know, part of the reason I did this channel was because I enjoyed the filming process and I actually enjoy the editing process. But I've just felt like I haven't had that time to give both from a time perspective and then also just from an energy perspective I've just been so bleh at the end of the day and then I get to a weekend and I literally I've got regular work I need to do I've got the basic stuff of keeping up with your house and laundry and grocery shopping and doing all those stuff on the weekends but then I've also just have when I've had that moment to go upstairs and film or to go do something I've really just been like I really just need to sit on this couch and curl up in this blanket and read this book and just have some time to recharge. And so that's what I've been doing. And I don't love the fact that I've kind of not been able to get out any content. And I think in my head, it was this balance of, I've been putting out three videos a week. I felt like I needed to do three videos a week because I had all this content I wanted to share with you guys. And even just to do the bare basics, um, three videos a week felt like I was barely scratching the surface of the stuff I wanted to talk about and share with you guys. And I had all this huge video list and three videos a week almost, I still felt like I, that wasn't enough for me to put out all the content I wanted to or to tap into all the ideas that I had. So the idea of cutting back to two videos a week or one video a week, I, f I don't know, in my head it was just like one of these all or nothing kind of things. And <laughs> that's a very silly place to be because I know that even one video is better than no videos. But I kind of have an all or nothing personality sometimes when it comes to these things. I either want to do everything really well or I just don't want to do it at all. And that's not always feasible. So sometimes you have to do your very best and just do it to the scale that you can do it at that moment. And that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, the new business and standing that up is gonna continue. It's gonna continue to take an inordinate amount of my time and energy. And I'm okay with that because I'm really excited about it. And, and quite frankly, as we get bonus 
stood up. I will probably talk about it a little more on here and give you guys some links. So if you guys are interested in it or have pets um, or even want to give me input on things that you have questions about, I will probably tap into you guys for stuff like that. So I love that and I'm super excited for that. And like I said, I will do anything for my sister. And if she needs me to come out there again and help her out with new baby, I will drop everything and be there for her in 2.2 seconds. But I also know that the winter time is not over. It's another gray, gross, cloudy day outside. My energy levels even today have been just kind of bleh. Um, but I need to find a balance to things and like I said, get the help that I need from someone to help me process and deal with some of the things going on in my life right now. But then also to find a balance for this channel that allows me to still put content out for you guys and stay connected with you guys, but not have it be you know, 15, 20 hours of my life a week, because right now I physically and emotionally just don't have 15 to 20 hours a week to give to this channel. I think it will change. In fact, I believe it will. Um, and I will look to find a balance and I will look to improve my um, mental state and um, balance my time as best I can and put my energy in lots of great places. Let's pause for a second, zoom out a little bit, and then let's talk about the other things on my face before I finish up. Eyeshadow palette is really pretty. The mattes blended well. They're a little powdery, but I think they worked really well, blended out really well. I think the look I came up with is really pretty. That shade that's sort of that blue purple shift is definitely thinner. I definitely had to kind of build it up. It's probably a shade that would look beautiful uh, as a layering shade. So my gut tells me that if I put the pink all matte shade all over my lid and then put this over the top or used a sticky base underneath it, it would be even more impactful. But I actually really like how that looks even just kind of lightly layered the way that it is. All right, we're gonna try this wet and wild one. The bristle brush seems really spaced apart. So I don't know how much mega volume I'm going to get from this, but let's give it a whirl. Once again, I do not have the world's best lashes and I'm not quite sure how best to hold my head so you guys can see this going on. So it definitely separates, it's definitely not clumpy, at least with one layer. Um, I would say it's just okay. Like it's not the worst mascara I've ever used, but it's also not like blowing me away either. All right, so let's zoom out and finish face. You know, it's interesting for as moisturized as my skin was, this is definitely feeling more matte than luminizing. I mean, my skin is not flat, You're definitely getting some glow, but I would say this is more of a natural finish foundation. And I don't feel like it needs powder, which kind of bums me out because I was planning on using this healthy powder from Physicians Formula, but I am not a fan of adding powder when I don't need powder on my face. So to be honest, I think I'm gonna try this a different day. So then in terms of things I still want to apply to my face, um, bronzer, blush, highlighter. So I wanna try a couple different highlighters. One is from e.l.f. This is their jelly highlighter. Uh, this is the shade Bubbly. So it is their lightest sort of pearl jelly highlighter. These can be a bit of a mess, um, but I'm curious to try this. And since I haven't powdered anything on my skin, it should go on pretty evenly. I do have a second e.l.f. highlighter that I may layer on over top. And this is their new white gold highlighter. It's absolutely beautiful. Like I love the imprint on this. Um, and it, I have tried this a couple of times and it can be built up to blinding metallic status. Um, I do have a couple of wet and wild bronzers here. So I had first picked up the shade Palm Beach Ready. Um, I'm gonna pull this really close to the camera, but it has a really strong sheen and a really strong gold undertone to it. So I picked up another shade at my local Walgreens and this is Sunset Striptease. It is also one of their lighter ones, but it doesn't seem to have the quite the gold undertone to it. I still think it might be, I don't know, I'm not sure about the undertone of these. They look really freaking similar. I also have the new shade of the Butter Blush in Spicy Mauve. I have used this quite a few times. I think this shade is absolutely gorgeous. So nice, give some glow to my skin today. And then in terms of lipsticks, I think I just wanna use this one. Um, it's from Milani, it's their Matte Satin. So Amore Satin Matte is what they're calling it. This is the shade Classic number seven. I 
think this shade is gonna go well with what's on my eyes. So in terms of my channel here, um, I am now, I think, of the full belief and opinion that this all or nothing sort of approach is obviously not working for me. I, I don't wanna just stop my channel. I really do enjoy, I still enjoy makeup. I still try, enjoy trying new makeup. I enjoy playing around with it. I enjoy, like it does bring me happiness. And I knew I wanted to film this video, but I just watched Jamie Page, who I do really enjoy, kind of talk about how she's been feeling down in the dumps and how she, she felt the video recently kind of um, talking about her, how makeup rather helps her just kind of get to a happy place, right? Like it's one of those things that brings her joy and she really does enjoy um, to kind of bring her out of a funk. And I do think that is true um, for me as well. So I do, I do think that getting into giving myself the grace not to post three times a week um, and to make two times my goal and be okay if there's a week where it's just one, right? Um, is kind of going to be a healthier place for me right now until I feel like I can add in that third video. It's kind of hard to work with. It's setting really fast. So that is kind of what I'm thinking at this point for my upload schedule is to kind of, um, my goal for it is for it to be twice a week. And I've never picked a day. And I know that probably makes the YouTube algorithm not like me as much. And it's always been that way for this for my channel. I have wanted to um, have the flexibility to upload when I could for a week versus saying it always has to be Tuesday at, you know, six o'clock or something like that because I also, I travel and some weeks it's easier for me to upload on Tuesdays and Thursdays and other weeks it works better for Mondays and Fridays. And so I wanted to always give myself that flexibility regardless because I knew, I just knew that was the only way this was gonna work for me. That I think I will keep on. So I do wanna do two videos a week for you guys again. So that's where I am right now. I hope you guys um, understand and this didn't come off as whiny or self-indulgent. That's definitely not what I wanted this video to be. That um, bronzer is way too orange for me. I don't know if you guys can tell that. I'm gonna go in with this Milani bronzer just a tangent on you for a second. This is Zero One Silky Matte. It's definitely more cool toned. In fact, I've heard a lot of people gripe that these Milani bronzers are too cool toned for them. For me, they're with cool skin, they are perfect. So I'm just gonna add some of this over the top to bronze up my skin, but also cool this very warm bronzer down. In terms of kind of easing back into things, obviously this video is up now on my channel. I do have, so I have a couple things filmed and I wanted to kind of get your input if you didn't, wouldn't mind down in the comments. Um, I have the third sort of best of 2018 bonus video that I never really got out. It is filmed, um, but it just never got edited and posted. Um, so that one is kind of just like bonus videos. So best packaging, favorite brand, um, most unique product, it's sort of like these little fun categories I'd come up with last year when I was doing sort of my roundup for 2017. Um, so I have that video. It feels a little disjointed now because I put out the first two in January. And now here it is, the end of February when I'm filming this. So let me know if that is something you would be interested in seeing or if you feel like at this point it's it's fine, we can just move on to other content. So I'd love your input on that. I would also love to get your input on fall drugstore launches from last year. So I had all these big plans of doing sort of my recap roundup of what brands launched for fall last year. And I tested and reviewed a ton of products and because of how things timed out with end of year videos, with um, just the videos that I needed to get out in December and just the testing process, by the time I got done testing all those products and I was ready to film, it was really the beginning of January and then all this went down. So now I feel a little silly doing these big, huge recap videos for fall of last year because these products have been out for a while and giving a fall recap is maybe I don't know, it just feels a little odd now that it's the end of February, but I do have all these products that I've tested. So part of me is thinking maybe rather than doing sort of a brand by brand sort of review of what came out for fall and what I tested, maybe I do a series of maybe three videos of products that didn't work for me, products that were kind of in the middle and then products that I absolutely loved from those drugstore launches 
Um, I am in the process of testing new drugstore makeup. In fact, obviously I have a lot of it in front of me. So I, I still do like the idea of doing that sort of recap series of here's all the things that Physicians Formula launched, here's what I tried and here's what I thought of them. So you guys can kind of see what's coming out from these brands and then also my opinions on them. Um, so I do like the idea of doing that for spring and kind of keeping that on my channel. But I also feel like, I don't know, doing that style for fall seems a little weird. So I'm kind of thinking, like I said, best mid-tier and worst of drugstore, of a bunch of drugstore products. Let me know if that would be interesting to you guys. I mean, some of this is stuff you probably have seen a lot of reviews on. Um, but I also try and pull in reviews from brands and products that don't get maybe as much hype out here on YouTube. Um, let me know how you feel about that as well. And then the third video that I would love to get your input on is one that I filmed um, and I don't hate the footage, so I think I would be okay with using it. Um, it's products that I picked up over the holidays. So when I went out to Phoenix and went to the Charlotte Tilbury counter and then even purchased some things in early January from Charlotte Tilbury's website and um, some new releases uh, that came out of some high-end products that I picked up, I kind of had this little bucket of things that I had tested and played around with that I picked up over the holidays, played around with in January. I had filmed a haul video but I have a whole bunch of sort of luxury high-end makeup that I picked up. Um, I'm kind of feeling like that haul video seems a little weird because I hauled it uh, technically when I filmed that in early January so it feels weird to show a haul video especially now that I have tested it for the last month and a half so let me know if you would be interested in sort of a luxury makeup sort of miscellaneous review kind of coming off of a haul. Um, if that is interesting for you guys, um, I would be happy to kind of film that. So that's kind of the third thing. So recapping, do I do the bonus video for awards for 2018 or is that something that nobody, you guys have moved on past? Totally fine if you have. Um, do I kind of break up a whole bunch of drugstore makeup that was launched towards the end of last year into sort of best medium worst sort of product categories and then third are you interested in sort of a luxury haul update kind of video um, for something that was you know purchased over the holidays so let me know on those three things if those are videos you'd be interested in i do want to get back in and refresh my everyday makeup drawer as well and kind of talk about those products so i do want to film that video as well and get that out for you because it's been a while since i've done those and i do really enjoy refreshing those makeup drawers So let's quickly talk about what's on my face and how I feel about it. I don't feel like either one of these Wet n Wild bronzers are gonna actually work for me. Even the shade um, in Sunset Striptease is just too warm. I definitely had to go over the top of it with this Milani, um, what do they call this? Sunlight Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. I do really enjoy this one. I feel like it's got a really nice cool undertone. It, to, on me, it doesn't come off as ashy. Um, and if anything, it just looks like a very, nice cool tone bronzer um i don't really like this jelly highlighter from elf i'm gonna keep playing around with it but my first impression is that it dries so quickly that i was having a hard time getting it blended into my skin and when i did get it blended into my skin it really didn't add a whole lot of like really pretty natural glow which is what i look for from a liquid highlighter i look for something that's easy to work with and then is very like naturally lit for them and glowy and i didn't feel like this was really even giving me that much impact on my cheeks so I will keep playing around with this but right now I'm not like I wasn't a fan upon first application um I do love this butter um blush in spicy mauve I think it's really pretty and I think it's um one that can be built up I think it is with a light hand I can use it as super fair but I think it's also got enough depth to it that it's going to work for people with uh, medium to tan skin tones as well and then I really do like this highlighter from e.l.f. I think it's really pretty. I've gone a little lighter with it today and it still is giving me quite the beam, but you can definitely build this up to like straight up intense metallic if that seems to be your preference there. In terms of this lipstick, it's definitely one of these ones that's darkened quite a bit. So and I'm, I've gotta be honest, I feel like this is a more comfortable matte liquid lipstick. Like it doesn't feel super drying on my lips but it is also not satin at all. I mean, it is perfectly matte. 
it's almost transfer proof too. So I was kind of thinking that this was going to be similar to the ColourPop Ultra Satin, which is still got a nice sort of little bit of a shine to it and it is long lasting but and super pigmented but doesn't set down. This one is almost completely set down and looks completely matte but it doesn't feel as drying as their regular matte formula but I also don't love the fact that it deepens quite a ton because I really liked the color that it was when I first put it on but as it has set down it has gotten significantly and I don't mind the shade but I really wish it was more of what was in the tube here if you can see that more nude colored or I'm not like jumping up and down excited for this right now so one thing I did want to come back and share with you is how much this foundation did darken I no longer think I need to go get a new shade so here is the foundation when it's dried and then here here is what it is when you firstly apply it so it is darkening at least Gosh, when I look at that, I almost feel like it's two shades darker. So now I do feel like that now that it's set, it is closer to my skin tone. I don't feel like it is super off from the, my neck or the rest of my face, um, but it's definitely one of those products that I don't think it oxidized because I look at these swatches, I don't necessarily think it is orange. That's typically what I think of with oxidation is that it is changing the undertone of the foundation as it dries. I just feel like it's one of those ones that darkens as it dries, kind of like this liquid lipstick. So when you first, when I'm first putting it on my skin, I'm like, ah, but as it sets down, um, I think it is setting to something that is a natural finish, um, that is definitely more of a natural, not matte finish, definitely not illuminating like it says. Um, but I don't hate how this looks on my skin. I'll be curious to see how it wears. I'm not noticing any major issues right now. I think my skin just looks really pretty and airbrushed. So um, just a heads up on that. If you are looking to pick up or look at the Smith & Colt foundations, if you can find them in your local Ulta, that would be awesome because then I would recommend finding an undertone that matches, swatch a couple on your wrist, go look at some other stuff in the store, and then come back and decide which one you think is going to work best for you. Um, but yeah, so that is the Smith & Colt Veiled Threat Weightless Micro Blurring Foundation. I definitely agree with the blurring aspect. I do feel like my skin looks nice and blurry right now. So that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I am quite certain this is going to be a super long video. So if you're here at the end, thanks for sticking around. Um, and thank you for your input now in the comments as I kind of process through how I go forward and things and just for listening in terms of where I've been and what you're doing. You guys have been such a nice supportive group all along. And I, I do hate that I feel like a little bit like I have abandoned you for the last month and a half, which is not something I necessarily set out to do. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching and connecting back up with me again after a little bit of a hiatus. I hope you guys have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.